Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for music. Thank you for, for all things. Larry, I'm going to on the spot. Would you please pray for the message as we get into it? Lord, thank you for this week. Thank you that we can come together as a church tonight. Drew has prepared something special for us, Lord, but we ask for your blessing on it. Help us to gain knowledge from it and help us to understand it and apply it to our life, Lord. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Um, okay. Recently, what I would call a Facebook nodding acquaintance this, you know, you, you, you don't really have Facebook friends, right? We got some friends on Facebook, but really it's Facebook naughty acquaintances. And posted a, um, sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Hang on a second. I'm just going to go into share screen mode here. This person posted a, um, a picture online with a caption, and the caption went like this. So here you see. Here you see this picture. I love how responsive it is, not. Here you see this picture, and this is the world before you offer your opinion. And now here's a picture of the world after you offer your opinion. Now, you can understand what he's trying to get at, this person. The, the, the idea was that the world basically shouldn't care about your opinion, that it's still st is still doing the same old thing all the time, regardless of your opinion. There's just one little problem. It's very clever, it's very cute, and it's very wrong. Because here's the thing. Our opinions, first of all, are perfectly human to have. We all have a point of view, we all express ourselves, and but when we, when we do that, we're just being human. If someone says that they are only interested in facts, in a way, they're trying to be superior to everybody else. Because you can't really, you know, you, you'd have to be a robot if you didn't have, a, have an opinion. But the other thing is, and it's especially true these days when we've got social media that's amplifying what people say and think and feel, it's like the pebble in the ocean. You throw it in, the ripples keep on going, and they keep on going everywhere. In some way, shape, or form, that smallest pebble affects things that are going on around it. And it's the same thing when we speak. Yes, the world does change in some way when we express an opinion. This is why we have to be very, very careful I'm going to flip back to share screen, and we're going to have a look at some scripture. We're going to take turns reading it. So get your, get your reading shoes on here. Daisy's already. Daisy is already. Um, who'd like to start with a couple of verses here? Sandy, go ahead. Un unmute yourself, of course. Thank you. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we are all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. We'd like to pick it up, Don. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned over by a very small rudder where, where, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Larry, do you want to take over? For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men 
who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Terry, are you still with us? Yep. Do you want to take the next two verses? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the mix of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. The wisdom does not, does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And that's from the book of James, as you probably noticed. Jesus' half-brother, warning us about what we say and how it's not within our human power to tame our tongue. We react. We don't respond. We react. And that, and we see it especially now, I mentioned about social media being able to amplify everything and just, just kick any kind of lie or evil thought or whatever it is around the world in an instant and then thousands of people pick it up and they amplify it and they keep adding on to it and commenting on it and so forth and whole wars can start as a result it's that forest fire that james talks about little kindling there and a big forest fire comes out of it so we as followers of jesus christ have got something that that others don't, and that is the Holy Spirit watching over what we say and do, and the ability to turn to the Holy Spirit and to take that moment. It could be days before we actually respond, but when we do, it is at exactly the right time and exactly what God wants us to say. And take a look. I'm going to read this next bit here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now we know 2 Corinthians 5.17 because that's the whole bit about a new creation. But let's read what goes around it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll start in verse 12. Where Paul writes, For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. Just to digress there for a moment, a reaction, even if we think we're reacting in the name of Jesus, even if we think we're reacting according to what we think the, the word of God would want at that point, that's still reacting in appearance, talking in appearance and not, and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. And if we are of sound mind, it is for you. He's using the royal we there. The, the, he's talking about himself at that point. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who, should, who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So if we have an opinion on something, and we just blurt out our expression of that opinion, what are we doing? We're doing it for ourselves. We're doing it to be performative. We're doing to show off how much we are, I don't know, in tune with God, how much we are close to the big sir. And at the meantime, we're not actually edifying anybody. And this is the whole thing about Paul, the whole thing in that, that piece from Thessalonians that I sent out in the, in the email. We're here to edify one another, not just in this group, but anybody that we come across. We're here to edify, to build up, to encourage. Paul goes on, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, 
If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. And here comes the big one. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We are ambassadors of Christ. And any time we put forward an opinion, we, we, it's, it's no longer our own minds. It is the mind of Christ. And we are allowed to see that when we receive the Holy Spirit. And we need to remember that we've got not that because there are times when someone will say something and it will just completely rankle us. You, you might see something online you've just got to respond to. Somebody might say something, even a casual remark in the workplace, a casual remark amongst friends. Even somebody in church might say something that absolutely rubs you the wrong way. And you need to take that extra moment and say, Lord, how would you have me respond to this? What would you want me to do? What do you want me to say? And as I say, it could take days before the response comes through, but it will be a response and you'll be speaking on behalf of God. Can you imagine if an ambassador went completely off script and started speaking his mind about a country that went completely against what his own country was trying to do, was saying, was trying to negotiate something? He would get a see me note. He'd be invited to Sussex Drive for a drink with the prime minister and not because the PM happened to think he might be hungry, thirsty. Instead, he would be called on the carpet and told, you know, you don't talk for yourself, you talk for the country. And we've, we've seen that happen a few times lately, in fact. But this is what we need to be doing is we, we are accountable to God. We are accountable to Jesus Christ for what we say, because what we say what we do is, is, is completely now for the ministry. Paul goes on. I'm just going to finish across into chapter 6 here because he goes on. He says, we then as workers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. In other words, he's given us his grace. He sent us the Holy Spirit. We, we are now completely different people. And what that means is, we don't talk for the way that we used to think. We now think along the same lines as God. For he says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time, Paul says. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. And you see, that is one of the things that, that we need to remember. We are now representing God. And the whole reason why we need to represent God is because we are trying to bring people who have not met Jesus Christ to meet him. So if we say things that are wrong, if we say things that go against the word of God, if we say things that we think are right, but are really not what God has called us to say or to do or to think or to speak, then we're driving people away. Paul says we give no offense, and that's the same thing. Certainly, we can't be responsible if somebody takes offense because the cross in itself is an offense. But we have to be careful that what we say does not offend people. What we say encourages people. Encouragement never offended anybody. Love never offended anybody. Genuine good thoughts never offended anybody. And if they then can connect that to Jesus and this to God, then you're seeing what Jesus says about let your light so shine before others that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It's 
pretty simple. It's just not easy because it means we have to continually suppress our own flesh, our desire to be seen, to be wise, to be seen, to be godly, to be seen, to be righteous. And rather than being seen, we, we do it. We get away from any idea that someone is going to compliment us, is going to hold us up as being great examples, and instead we just do it. And let the love, let the light, let the joy shine through to other people. This is a time when people need encouragement. We need encouragement in our group here. People we know need encouragement. Amelia was saying about how, how so many people just aren't even bothering looking at, at, the, um, at the news. The term doom scrolling came up about a year ago for people going through their phones and going through the exactly, right, Sandy? Going through their phones and going through all the, all the news feeds they've got, looking at all the doom that's happening out there. Well, we've got to be <laughs> the opposite of Lauren Green, the voice of not doom. And get away from the doom speak. I'll explain that a little later, Don, because you may not catch that, that reference. But we need to be the ones who are the voices of joy, the voice of happiness, the voices of hope. Being hopeful and being positive in a situation like this is not tone deaf. It's exactly what is needed. And it's the counterpoint to all the things that are going on. And we've got it. So let's share it. Let's let our cup run over and spill onto everybody else around us. And it starts with looking at our own opinions and hitting pause before we say anything. Hitting pause and then hitting our knees. Lord, what do you want me to say? I have my opinion, but what's yours? Because that's what I'm going to speak. Father, we just give you thanks for Thanks for hope. Thanks for the assignment to bring joy and hope to so many other people in the world, the ones who really need to hear it. Thank you that your son, Jesus, came for everybody. And so we reach out to everybody, not just the converted, not just the, the, the people in the choir, but to the people who don't know you yet. A non-believer is just a, a saint who hasn't met Jesus yet. Help us to remember that and to bring that hope and joy and gladness, even in this time, especially in this time, that others will come to see and know you and, be glorified and see you glorified and be raised up along with us, along with everybody else who knows you and loves you. We thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen.